Welcome to Home Team Advantage. I'm Gary Giambetti along with Mike Egan. And uh, we have a lot of stuff to dive into today. Great. And I guess we'll just start with what happened last night and the day. Well, I don't want to talk about what happened last, last night. night. You don't, personally. <laughs> but um, I don't, uh, you know, kiss and tell. <laughs> on Tuesday, for the first time in uh, 18 games, the Minnesota Twins. Since 2002 when they beat the Oakland well, they, Athletics. Yeah, okay. Then, well, didn't they beat the Yankees in one game mm -mm. after that? And no, then no. it started? No, it was oh, all right. 2002. All right. Well, they <laughs> snapped their 18-game losing streak in the playoffs, winning 3-1 to one over Toronto. And then last night, they snapped another uh, – string of not being advancing out of a round of a playoffs by winning two nothing. Maybe I did have it wrong. Maybe that's they won a series for the first time since two thousand two. Yes. And then it was the Yankees who Yeah, because right yeah, the the infamous, I guess, Phil Cuzzy fall ball call on Joe Mauer, yeah. which which uh, Michael Kay on the broadcast there and Alex Rodriguez brought up yeah. <laughs> last night, uh when a when a, one of the Toronto batters hit a ball down the left field line that was foul but uh he, he mentioned that uh yeah. the, the the infamous phil cuzzy call on joe mauer and who was the relief pitcher for the twins when they beat oakland eddie guardado every day eddie guardado. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I, that's the first that's the first game that oakland lost when they won like 32 in a row or something like that yeah they, yeah they had that 20 i think it was a it's 20 a game winning streak Philly ball yeah but they said it would never work. Well, you know what? It didn't work in the playoff, but that doesn't mean that was because of that. Right. The right. Twins just all played them in that yeah. series. I mean. But the Twins pulled it off uh, yesterday, and, you know, hats off to them. I still don't believe Rocky Balboa. You got a guy at first, you're, you need a run and nobody out, and you don't bunt the ball. I just don't understand that. <laughs> well, I, that's not the way baseball is played anymore. But evidently, according to, to Ron, our wonderful producer, director, or extraordinaire, you know, the A Rod and uh, Michael K were both lamenting about that why yep. they don't bunt anymore to get runners over. And then when Toronto did it last night, they had already had one out, so then he's sacrificing. Yep. Guys over to second and third, but then you know, but now you have two out, which doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But with that Toronto lineup, you know, it, they could um, they could have easily knocked those two runs in, but they didn't. Well, the one thing you have to give hats off to is the Twins pitching staff. I think that uh, uh, one, I didn't know they were the best pitching staff in American League Baseball. Well, if they year. weren't the best, they were in the top two. Uh -huh. Yeah, as far as ERA goes, yeah, yeah, they were they were top two as far as ERA goes. And the other thing I was telling Ron earlier is we keep thinking Rocky Rocky Balboa. <laughs> now you got me saying it is uh, give, gives one of the quickest hooks yep. in the major leagues. But that is this year that was not the case. They were the number two team in the league as far as letting their yep. starters go the number of innings. So, you know, all that stuff you hear heard from last year and that did not happen this year. The twin starters went a lot longer than most pitching staffs. The other question I had, you know, we talked a little bit about it our, our pre-meeting is uh, Toronto's pitcher who used to pitch for the Twins, you know, they pulled him in the fifth by design. If What would have happened if they would have left him in there? Mm -hmm. I guess we're never going to know. Right. And like they said, maybe the Twins Twins players were high-fiving each other when they came out and took them out of the game yep. because, maybe, you know, and it wasn't that they weren't. I think they pulled them in the fourth. Fourth inning? Well, was it somewhere in, yeah, somewhere in there. It was either the fourth or the Yep. With no out in the fifth. I think it was no out in the fifth, but I'm not sure. Because he walked Lewis, and then yep. they bring him in, and the Kikuchi. No, he was a good pitcher himself. Yep. But he's a left-hander, and that you know they wanted the Twins to put the right-handers up, put the right-handers in, and it, you know it didn't didn't work out. Right, that's the way baseball is. I mean, sometimes it works, stuff works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, yeah, no, and now they go to play Houston. Two games at Houston Saturday and Sunday, and then come home Tuesday and Wednesday. We think. Correct. Yeah, and then if necessary, whatever it would back be Friday, maybe back in Houston. So it's a best of five. So now they have a, they're going to have to reset their roster. 
Yeah, I don't know if they'll take more pitchers to this one or more hitters, but. And you mentioned earlier too about Mr. Buxton. He is not on the playoff roster as of today, correct? No, he was not on in this two game, this three game series. He was not on the roster. But they can add more but players as they advance further. They can, yeah. They can adjust their their rosters as they each series round goes yeah. on. So even through the to the World Series, they can adjust. And um, yeah, I, I this is not. To, you know how I felt about Sano, and I know how you felt about Sano. Who? This is not a. Uh, I don't think this is the same circumstance. Yes, he hasn't hit very well. His average is bad. But he also he's more consistent as far as the power numbers go as than Sano was. I, I understand that, but my my contention is that you reward a player that's been contributing to the team through the whole year. Now, are you going to take one of these young kids that have been contributing and, well, we're going to, you're not going to make the playoffs, we got to bring Buxton in. <laughs> no, that just doesn't. It, it well, doesn't. I know. I get it. I don't understand. Hey, it's not, I like, don't a, under, it's I don't, not like it's Joe Maurer. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we were, I mean, we also talked about, the, you know, this is totally off base. Well, not quite off base, but, the you know, the Atlanta Braves, this year hit 307 home runs. Yep. And that tied the, the twins. twins who in 2019 <laughs> hit 307. Yeah. Well, the twins were up as much as I didn't think they were a home run hitting team. I, they must have hit at least 250 to 60 yep. home runs this year, which makes them a home run hitting team. Right. Now, I contend that. If Buxton plays a full season, if Royce Lewis plays a full season, and if Correa plays a full season, the Twins are probably are approaching that 300 70 again. home run mark. Yep. Yeah, that's, so I, I think that would have been a heck of a race to, between them and Atlanta to yep. see who would uh, hit the most home runs. So, Wouldn't it be that, nice to see Atlanta and the Twins in the World Series again? Well, yeah, I'd give Atlanta a chance to – Redeem themselves. Yeah, yeah, and I think they probably would. Uh, however, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want to see that. But there's some good series. I mean, it's the Twins and the Astros, and then it's Texas, the Rangers, and, and um, Baltimore, and then there's the the Dodgers, and uh, I believe Arizona, mm -hmm. and they then Atlanta Milwaukee. and Philadelphia. Yeah. So there's some good series coming up. If you like baseball, playoff yeah. baseball. There's nothing better than playoff baseball. I can see being a d during a year where it's a little bit maybe boring, but well, it gets hyped a lot more too. You know, when you put it on TV and they're, you know, they got they got a camera everywhere for everything. And but uh, it was real nice just to follow up a bit when Korea they asked Korea after the game, what do you think about this team? And he said it's kind of like the Houston team he played on, where some of the older players, you know, were able to dwell with the younger players and everybody contributed and. So I think I think they got a good chance. We'll see. I'm not jumping on their bandwagon, but I'm just <laughs> thinking they got a good chance. So at, well, least, at least they made it interesting the first two games. Yes, and <laughs> uh, you know he. Uh, hopefully that we stay injury free. Yep. I mean that's the big thing. They have to have those guys in their lineup. Or okay. Well, our, again in our pre our pre meeting we talked a little bit about the pitcher. Do you think he purposely threw those two oh. pitches high? And next thing you know, he strikes out the side. And what was it, a fingernail or just a blister? Or? I'm not sure. It was something on his thumb. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess they were all checking out, checking up on him for about five minutes to see what was going yeah. on. But, um, yeah, I don't – I don't – I'm still not sold about the on the Twins' bullpen. Now, they have done well in the, yeah. these two games, but – they're giving up. I don't know the other night. Griffin Jacks, I think, put two guys yeah. on base. And uh, Duran, I you know, I'd like to think he did that on purpose. But I don't think he's good enough to do that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, just say if you're that batter and the first two go sailing over your head at 100 miles an hour, you know, oh, he's, there's something wrong with him. He can't. And the next thing you know, you're well, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> as long, I contend, as long as he pitches and not throws. No. He's fine. And that first batter, that's the first strikeout he's had in 36 at bats. So, so well, <clears throat> that more, you know, if that's the case, then they've got just as good a chance as anybody yeah. 
And the one guy that we thought was going to be gone, but gone, it's probably one of their better pitchers right now. He is. I don't. Did he ever get into it? I don't Not last night. No. So he no. hasn't been in a, in any of the games no. yet. So we'll see. I think yeah, I heard him. They say he was warming up yesterday, but yep. I, we'll see. I mean, hopefully he he turned his year around from last year, and maybe he'll be more of a benef- benefit than a detriment. Well, winning is contagious, and winning also changes a lot of your. I don't know how you put it. Uh, how you approach the game? Well, or, you know, yeah, you, your confidence your and stuff confidence like that. Like that and, and so, so yeah, that's. Um, that takes care of so so good luck to the twins and hopefully you advance to the ALCS. And wouldn't it be interesting if the Vikings got a home game on a Sunday and the Twins got a playoff game on a Sunday? Who draws the most people? <laughs> well, I've heard Especially already if the Vikings lose to Kansas City and lose the the game after that. Well, they supposedly Sunday they're going to probably play the Twins game later. In oh, the I day, thought, oh. later in the evening, so it doesn't it cross over with the Vikings. Oh, so that's so. What's your name? Can go watch the game then with Kelsey. Taylor Swift can yeah. show up okay. to the to the T <laughs> U.S. The Bank Stadium <laughs> and watch her her boyfriend play against the Vikings, and then go over and watch the Twins afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that would be a good thing. That would that might rile some. Well, that game's Pretty, a, that game no. Yeah, that game would be in Houston anyway, yeah. so it doesn't matter. She can't. Pretty sad, in my opinion, that the NFL is promoting her being at stadium. And it just, what they say is his uh, jersey sales went up 400%. And the guy that has the, the, the seat right in front of the booth that she was sitting in got offered 10 times more than what the, the seats were just so they could sit there and yeah. she shows up. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, yeah, but did the NFL do anything to market itself, so. It still does. Yeah. Whether you want to believe in it or not. Mm. Okay, let's see. So, yeah, we might as well just the Vikings do play the Chiefs Sunday. Uh, they finally got on the board in the victory column with that win over Carolina, but it was one ugly win. Yep. I thought. <laughs> thank, thank God for Mr. Smith. Well. <laughs> Yeah, so you know the you know the quarterback for Carolina, you know I had heard he had a terrible game, but and uh, and maybe that's why I sit here and pro scouts are working with their teams, but I didn't think his game was that bad. Well, I don't think he did that bad. I mean, for a rookie, he was it his fault when he fumbled? Not really. No, not when you got you got a quack pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, ask Kirk Cousins about that. He gets yeah. whacked pretty good sometimes in fumbles. Yeah, so even when he doesn't get whacked, he fumbles. fumbles. <laughs> so, I mean, I you know, it wasn't a great game by him. No. Does he need to learn? Yes. Um, so, did not everybody off the that's trade Kirk Cousins bandwagon now? Or? Well, you haven't heard much talk of it anymore. No. But, you know, and I've got some golfing buddies that uh, – I told them one day while we were all playing that the Vikings were going to go 0 and 5 because I didn't think they had a. Not that I didn't think they could beat Carolina, but after they lost those first three games, yep. it was like, okay, I could see Carolina beating us. That's yep. not out of the realm of possibility. And then you have Kansas City. Yep. Well, they didn't. They didn't like that statement very well, so well, they let me know about it after they won the game. And but. you know, Kansas City would, you know, didn't look too good the other night either. You know, they no playing against a, a backup Jets quarterback. But uh, you never know. I guess I, I don't think they can beat Kansas City myself, and I don't think they can beat San Francisco. Well, so and they got the Bears in between, correct? That's the that, that's the issue coming up. Is you. To today the talk on K fan, but you got to get two of the next three games. Yep. Because then you're what maybe three and four, and then your so- schedule softens up a little bit after the 49ers game. Right. The next five games are like the bear. Well, not really. It's softened because you got Detroit. Well, that's of, not till the, the end of the year. But the, but then the next games the next after games pretty, San Francisco yep. are, you know, not. But again, they lost to Tampa Bay. Yep. Again, who did they lose to? Who was the other team that they lost to? Chargers. Chargers. They lost to the Chargers. Games that were winnable games. Yep. And so you can't ever count anything as being a for sure victory. But there's 
opponents that you, you should be able to beat. No, I don't, because should they be able to beat Kansas City? Yeah, Kansas City is just another football team. Yep. I don't care that they've won two titles. I mean, <laughs> they play well at the end of the year. Now, if you're going to beat them, you're going to beat them now. How many titles does Minnesota have? Well, they don't have any. Yep. Yeah, I get that part of it. <laughs> How many times did they go? Four. Four. I think the only other team that we had a worse record than them was Buffalo, right? Buffalo has lost four. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, in the last time, we obviously, we went to the Super Bowls, uh, what, 77? Something like that. So, yeah, it's been a long time. Well, maybe it'll be like the, the Twins. So they'll come back and put a few wins together and go to the Super Bowl. Well, the offense is, is very capable of scoring against yep. Kansas City. Yep. If the defense plays like it did against Carolina – very capable of beating yeah. Kansas City, especially yeah. now that they got Marcus Davenport back. It looked yeah. like he was a force of one. So the problem I see with their defense, though, and you know, this it's a defensive coach they brought over from Philadelphia, is that correct? You know, he was supposed to be the answer to all their questions. You're not going to win if you've got a blitz on every other play, <laughs> and that's what they do. And I just don't think they have the defensive backs that can cover when they do that, but. That's why I sit here. That's why the NFL sent me sent me my notice. Not for long. Not for long. <laughs> we always got to bring that up. Yep. No doubt. <laughs> so hey, you know, beat Kansas City, beat two and three, and then you're you know I don't. And you get the Bears. <clears throat> the Bears, yeah, which is the Bears, the winnable game. Yep. Um, but who knows? Justin Fields will look like an All Pro against us, yeah. probably. Then we won't. Well, that, then again, you're talking about, was it the other night on ESPN, they were talking about maybe the, the uh, Vikings should sign Cousins to a three-year deal and then find or draft a young quarterback that can work under him and learn under him. But <laughs> yeah. that doesn't work that way anymore. No, how does that work? I mean, that never seems to work out. You have to be in the top five in the draft, and there has to be a good quarterback class coming out. But when you look at it, Gary, most of the top quarterbacks – by the time they're a senior in college, they're ready to play. I mean, look at Alabama, Ohio State, uh, LSU. I mean, all those schools, those quarterbacks are basically ready to play pro ball. Mm. So, um, you know, why pay someone for three years to play and then draft a player to sit there for th three years? So I, I don't know. I just I don't have much confidence in the GM for the Minnesota Vikings. Well, yeah. well so what? A, <clears throat> here's a here's a rhetorical question, maybe because I know you can't answer this one. But what if they're two and five? See you later, Mr. Games? Cousins. I, yeah, I mean that's <laughs> let's go out to the highest bidder. Well, because even though you could still win, let's say it's the next five games after San Francisco, you could still win those and be what seven and five. Well, I don't. know, Maybe it's this season's not. Not with Detroit. Up. That was Detroit. Yeah, but that's not even counting Detroit games because those no, are. No, I'm just saying. I don't. I think Detroit's going to win the division. <clears throat> well, they could, so. certainly, but we'll see how they handle prosperity. And you know, do you sign him for the money that I guess he would require to have to sign him for three years, or do you go after a younger quarterback? Mm -hmm. I, well, eventually you have to. Yep. So. It will, uh, I mean, who is their backup quarterback now? Nick Mullins. Who? Uh, you haven't heard of him? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's a capable? You and I could be the backup quarterback. Well, no, I don't. I don't think that's so because I can't throw the ball. That's the best job in, in any sport is to be a backup quarterback in the NFL because you get paid millions to sit on the bench. That's, that's right. <laughs> All right. Wild? High school. Well, oh, you no, want to go back to go, high school? Let's go high school. Oh, we're really going to wind them up tonight. All right. Uh, Poor girls at the senior house are trying. What are, what are they doing? Now they're going to high school. What happened to the pro side? Nah, we don't, the wild haven't started yet, so <laughs> we're we'll wait till they're on. And I'll try to get a hold of Micheletti see if he'll come on. Maybe he'll come on next week and we can preview the yeah. season. The Gophers <clears throat> are picked number one in the. <clears throat> All right. Anyways, high school sports. Uh, yeah, football team. Uh, didn't had didn't handle <clears throat> their prosperity very well last week in Pequot, yeah. and uh, now they have. Well, I'm on the football. I vote on the football poll for the Star Tribune. And I know I've put Esco. I voted him first, but there's another team there, that Stewartville or something. Okay. That's number one, but Esco's number two in 3A, and that's not going to be 
It's not going to be not going to be easy to <laughs> to knock the Eskimos off because they have. And, and number one, go to watch these young boys play because they need your support. But if you wanted to go to a game to watch somebody, go there to watch the McCoy Parrish from Esco. Yep. He's a running back, linebacker. He is, I believe, headed to the University of Minnesota next year yep. to play. Maybe even this year. From Well, if he happens to, yeah, he could go and enroll and then get himself ready for, for uh, his first year. year. Yeah. And practice in the spring games, I suppose, and all that stuff. But that's, I mean, obviously, that's allegedly might, you know, jump ship over there and after. But if he is a base or a basketball player, maybe he wants to stick yep. around and play basketball. But he's the top, one of the top prospects in the state of Minnesota for, for football, and he's going to the U, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, we finally are getting some. Well, I, PJ's done a decent job of getting in-state oh, yeah. kids, but. Yeah, so he would be the, I think, the guy to watch, other than to go watch again, support your team, yep, and give these kids all the encouragement that they that they deserve, yep, for for battling battling it out this season. Uh, now they'll have two games left after this, I believe. They play Mora, and then they play Two Harbors. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you know Two Harbors is usually tough. Mora's probably pretty good, I yep. would think, but. I think the Mora game is here. Two harbors, two harbors might be up there, up and there. they're always big. Just yeah, big, big yeah. Farm kids. Two harbors will be they'll be decent, and we'll talk more about that as we get closer to those games. But it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a fun night. It's going to be cold, I yep. suppose, a little bit chilly. Shouldn't say cold; it should be chilly. They got the new scoreboard; it'll be up. Yeah, I was just going to say that the new scoreboard is up. Whether or not it'll be running. Yep. At that point, well, it's still unknown. I guess today we'd find out if they hook up the power or right. not. Or maybe they did that yesterday, and now today they wanted to do some yeah. training on it. Yeah, it takes like six people to run that thing. <laughs> it's it's going to be nice. Yeah, I, uh, that field is sharp, so sharp to look at. I mean, it's... Are you doing the play-by-play? -play? Uh, I do Did not know that. Okay. I do not know that. I... Assuming, I, I don't want to assume. Yeah. Because maybe if a teacher wants to do the public address, more power to them. I'm not don't want to take jobs away from anybody. And yeah. Well. I already do enough of that, so <laughs> it's not like I need any more. <laughs> well, you did such a nice job last time. I just thought. Well. Maybe they'd... Yeah, I did. Oh, well, okay. Thank you so much. I'll take the compliment. I mean. To do it for a bag of popcorn and a, and a, <laughs> and a latte from Caribou Coffee, yeah, it's pretty that, good. That's not bad. It's, it pays for my coffee. Yeah. So, but, but uh, cross country, they uh, went to McGregor on Tuesday. The girls won the team event. There was only like five or six teams there, but you know it's a small, small meet, fun meet, no pressure. Yeah. And Melina Sullivan and uh, Tara Hurtley and finished one and two, and then they had. Some girls finish like three or four, five, and six or something. So they pretty much dominated. Good. The boys were second behind Greenway Nashua Kiwatin with their top runner was Lucas Arnold, and then Silas Langer came in after Lucas. Okay. So that's them. That does it for them. They, well, they have this. Well, they have a couple more meets coming up. The I are their, their their conference meets will be coming up here probably next week. And then the section meets will be the last week of okay. October. Do you know where those are held? The section meet is going to be here. Oh, nice. So, is that at the Muni again? Yeah. Okay. And the Class A meet, section meet, will be held in, at Eagles Ridge. Okay. So there's two two dates there. They're both on the same day. It's kind of hard to get to both. But right. Tennis team won their first section match the other night against Andover. Beat them six to one. Now today they are traveling to Elk River. No oh boy. To take on the Elks, I yeah. think they're that's their nickname. <clears throat> they're the number one seed, and they have probably like one of the number one players in the state. And they're not just one player deep; they're right. yeah. ten players deep probably. So they, Hibbing has their work cut out for it. Yeah, well, good luck to them. So <clears throat> take care of swimming. They uh, lost to uh, Proctor the other night, but beat Denfeld in a triple dual meet, which is kind of weird. But 
but they don't have anything now until next weekend when they go to the true team meet, I think is in Grand Rapids. So, so things are winding down. And soccer's, um, they've been rather, they've been playing pretty, some good soccer, both the boys and the girls teams. They, um, girls and the boys both won Monday against Masabi East area. The girls played here and the boys played over at Rock Ridge. Uh, they have, uh, there's a soccer game tonight at uh, Cheever Field. Then there's volleyball tonight at the Lincoln. Uh, then Saturday, the, both the boys and the girls play starting at, a, well, one starts at 11, the other one starts at 1 at Cheever Field. Nice. So they're getting ready to close out their seasons, which is really strange to say. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it is October. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's flying by you so far. You forgot to turn your heat on last night. You know, remember, it's October. <laughs> uh, so that pretty much, well, the Gophers, Gopher football team plays Michigan. Uh, they're like 20 point, 20 and a half point underdogs. What's Michigan, number two in the country? Yes, they're number two. Um, it's funny, I was reading, you know, the only other team, George is going after the three-peat this year. And no, they say no team has ever done it. Well, no, the Minnesota Gophers did it back in the 30s. But they're not, they don't necessarily count it because it was before the AP came out oh, and started okay. picking picking national championship. Yeah. So the, the year 35 was the last year the Gophers won it, or that the uh, run that string, and then the AP thing started at 36. Okay. So it doesn't it doesn't count because it yeah. wasn't picked by the AP. Pre-AP. Yeah. yeah, so, no, I no, I don't, the Gophers have done three, they've won it three times. I don't, I, and this is an article in Sports Illustrated, yeah. well, and they, I can't believe they'd even and then they won the Rose, didn't they win the Rose Bowl a couple of times in the early 60s? Oh, I'm sure they have, yeah. <laughs> they, you know, they've won maybe national championships after the 30s, because I think they won a couple in the 40s. They did win a couple in the 40s, but then uh, when they were going for the three-peat, World War II broke out. Okay. So um, that's, that kind of stopped there, stopped yeah. them in their tracks. So, But, uh, hey, it was an interesting show today. Nice yeah. working with you. Good luck with the Twins. Ron, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ron. And uh, for Mike Egan, I'm Gary Gimbetti. We'll see you again on Home Team Advantage. For over 25 years, U.S. Bank, located at 211 East Howard Street in Hibbing, Minnesota, has provided office and studio space for Hibbing Public Access Television. We are thankful for their ongoing support.